Okay, everybody, welcome to Erie Arachnids feeding video, August 2018. Um, this is going to be mostly the ones in the softball enclosure and the baseball enclosures. <clears throat> there may be a few odd ones here or there that we throw in, maybe the European style with the Gramostola rosea, um, Homo ioma species blue, the Portery. Uh, I'll probably feed the Baumgartenia again, not Homori because he's not ready yet or she's not ready yet, but. Uh, we'll get as many as we can. So let's start off with this one. This is the Ceratogyrus meridionalis. Usually a pretty good uh, eater. Um, is in the hide at your 11 o'clock position there. Goodbye. Pretty quick. Now this one usually comes out, so we'll give it a second and see if it does. I feel like I'm crooked here or tilted or something. Yeah, that's a little bit more centered, isn't it? Come on out. No? Not going to do it this time, huh? Okay, let's move on. Okay, well, we're going to try and tong feed this Lassiodora Kluge. Yuppers. Yummy, yummy. This was a roach that wasn't, I don't know what happened when I dumped them in, but it was upside down, kind of flailing its leg. So I grabbed it, dropped it, dropped the camera on the Kluge's enclosure, scared the crap out of the spider, picked the roach back up, and finally got it on film. So, you're welcome. Next up. Okay, Cercopelma rubronitans. I think this one actually becomes not lazy and actually comes out for the roach instead of waiting for it just to jump on its dinner plate. I'm a f funny feeling that it's going to wait for it to jump on the plate. <clears throat> you tell me you can't feel that? I think you spiders are freaking spoiled. Sit around and wait for somebody to throw food at you. And you just wait for it to come to you. You don't have to cook it. You don't have to do anything. Just sit there. And then this roach won't even go into your home. This roach is dumb. Actually, he's not really dumb. I think it's our spider that's dumb. Yeah, there we go. Well, you got it now. Lazy piece of crap. Okay. Let's see if we can find somebody that's not so stinking lazy. This is the Cercopelma species boquette. I would imagine that this one probably won't waste much time at all. Great, great eater, especially since it's molted now. Their capelmas are very, very pretty spiders, especially as slings. I mean, they get phenomenal when they get bigger. Um, you know, there's still a lot of red rumps in them, and there's some other wicked coloring that goes along with them, but uh, they're a good eating species, so uh, genus and period. If you're looking for something that's a little less flicky, uh, a little bit more rambunctious, and a really good eater that doesn't get huge like Elasiodora, check out these Cercopelmas. Okay, here we have the Selenocosmia Kobariki. Um, I don't even know what the common name is, if there is, even is one, but you can see the leg coming out of the burrow right there at your 7 o'clock. You can see the roach right there as well. Uh, this is a, I mean, these got some, Asian species have some really, really wicked coloring. Uh, banding and that you can see. This one actually reminds me, uh, just looking at it right here, since it's molted the first time, of 
uh, similar, not, I don't want to say exactly, because people are probably going to blow me up about this, but some of the coloring on the front, the legs of this thing kind of remind me of Heterothelli gabonensis, or gaboensis, I guess that would be right, gabon, or gabonensis. Um, it's got some pretty wicked color. It's just that we can never see it because we have to zoom right in and I can never get the camera right. You can see I bumped, the, bumped it, now it's back in, but see if we can get it to come back out again with this roach. It also kind of reminds me a little bit of the Epibopus rufusins with the coloring a little bit too, and the banding, the way the legs are in the front. Just an absolute cool spider. I think what's going on is I I am selling my Brachypalma baby to my brother because uh, he really wants one. He's got an enclosure that he really wants to or he wants to put it in. So um, what he's going to do is just order me a couple spiders from Pelt Frictions. Um, it's place so we're. What we're looking at is, hold on, we're going to come up the back side now. Got to watch over here just in case because it's over there and the legs are starting to come out of that back burrow. But uh, they're both Syriopogaba species, the Shiodeti and the Albostriatus. Uh, those are two that I want to pick up. So I was thinking about the uh, species Bok Ma, um, but I, I think I'd rather get the two for the same price as the one. So... No, we just don't want to come out now, do we? You're going to come back over here, and then we're going to come back out over on this side, aren't you? Oh, he's coming out back there. Can't decide. Try climbing, you stupid little roach. There you go. Good deal. After three minutes. Okay, next one. Okay, so this is the Grandma Stola Grosso. We're going to see if it'll grab this roach real quick and eat, and then I'll tell you a quick story. You can see how food aggressive they are. When when they want to eat or when there's something in their enclosure and they're not in primal, they are pretty much... Um, they are they are hunters. They they go all over the place trying to get their meal. We gotta get him back out of there. But so while you're watching him, here's the story. I was just feeding my Ornithoctonus Oreo tibialis. I was on about clip four. So you know when I don't get a good clip, I just you know if it gets to be a couple minutes long, I just delete it and start over because the spider doesn't come out. <clears throat> I was on about clip four. And I fed it with a worm, and the worm was walking across its web real, real slowly. I was waiting for the spider to come out. I start to see legs, and just as I got ready to hit the play button, somebody sent me a private message. Now, I know you all know who she is. It's not her fault. It was actually my fault. Not that she sent me the message, but... I went to swipe it up to hit the play button and I accidentally hit the like button and it sent a like and when it sent a like it said sending like so I couldn't scroll the banner up to hit the play button on the camera and the, the Oreo tibialis came all the way out in its beautiful glory grabbed the worm and went all the way back in before I had a chance to push the play button. So you guys know what to do right? You guys have to go to Cat's Tarantulas, or Tarantula Cat, sorry, Tarantula Cat's channel and tell her that she's a video killer. There you go. It was such a good clip, too. It would have been awesome. This one took a little bit longer than I wanted it to, but uh, finally got done what it got done, or what it was supposed to do. So we're going to move on. Okay, the odds are we probably won't see this one come out, but we're going to try. This is the Canthoscuria musculosa. 
uh, if the if the roach goes right down into that corner up there at your 11 o'clock, we're not going to see anything. So, and that's exactly where it's going to go. Oh, we did get a little bit of glimpse. Beautiful. At least we got to see the roach go down the hole. Okay, let's uh, proceed. Okay, here is the Megaphoboma misomasalis, or mesomasalis, or mesomasalis. See if this one might... This roach is a little big, but... Not too big. <laughs> See, this is why I mean about hides. It's hard to catch catch them on film when when you when you have hides like this. And I've said it before. I know a lot of people on YouTube they don't use hides, or they take them out specifically when they're feeding tarantulas, so that you can see the clip. I just can't do that. I just can't bring it to myself to do that. And you know, I can't bring it to myself to have them in small little enclosures that they barely touch, you know, or they can move and are almost touching the sides. I, I just, it's just not me. I can't do it. So sorry you guys didn't see this one, but uh, hopefully now you're not going to see the next one either because we're going to do that through the, the lid because that's the Hapalopa species Columbia large and we all know what happened the last time. Okay, so I have to have some stuff. I got to get some stuff ready here just in case. This is the new Augustophellus Isendami. Try and do this without killing the light too much. We're gonna try feeding it a little Red Runner nymph. Oh, yep, took it right away. Look at these beautiful things. Awesome. All right, let's uh, move on. We're gonna finish with just a handful of slings. Um, and then we'll do the next feeding video with the baseball cubes, the avicularia, the um, larger hottie hottie, the Cambridge eye, the Armenia, the, uh, we'll probably try and feed the baby LPs on, on camera, the, the ones that I still have, uh, the Lassia dordipicillus as well, uh, because we're going to move those out of those little vials into those two ounce deli cups, so we'll be able to get a shot of those guys. And then I have a tarantula in an enclosure, a baseball enclosure, baseball cube enclosure, that uh, I have to go back over my records and see who it is because I thought it was the Megaphoboma mesomasalis, and it's not. So uh, it's a new world, I know that much. I'm sure I'll be able to figure it out. But there's that little guy. All right, let's move on. Okay, so in here is one of the two new... Seriopagopus hotty hotties. We'll see if he wants to eat. Do a little roach walking around. You can see the spider there at, uh, what would be that, about your 10 o'clock position there. I'm not getting very good light on this, but I probably should be using the. You can see, you definitely see the spider there. Probably should be using the uh, backlight and the LED ring light. This one doesn't seem like it wants to eat. Made itself a nice little home though, as you can see. Right there it is. Okay, let's try the other one. Okay, the ring light's definitely the way to go. If I can hold still enough, we'll try and hopefully this roach won't scare it completely. Oh yeah, just got it. Took it right down. That's good. Two out of the three new little babies ate. Okay. We got some, let's see what we got. Little Elbiceps are going to try and feed. I'm not sure if the Tapanakinius gigas is in premolt because it's buried itself. Uh, we also have the Iridopalma herestum I'd like to feed. Uh, I'll show you my Dolichotheli diamantinensis just molted. Uh, we have a video. Uh, yeah, what, what it? What's over here? Oh, the Idiothella mira, and uh, oh, the Brachypelma albiceps. I don't know if I already said that or not, but all right, let's close him up. All right, so this one didn't really want to eat. There's a little nymph in there with it. This is the Pisletheria metallica. You could see it. It's way down below. I mean, way, way down there. 
dug down through the moss. You can see where it made its home right down there to, underneath. So that's about as fossorial of a post area you're going to find. Um, I thought I'd give you guys a look. I mean, it doesn't look anything like a pre Metallica right now. It just looks like a little tiny piece of Theria species, baby. So let's uh, let's try something new. Okay, so here is the Iridopelma hirstum. Uh, my brother desperately wants one of these. <laughs> he can't have one. Um, this was a this was a birthday gift from Amy and Quentin. So uh, very very special trench. They bred these. So. Um, Never owned one before, so I'm pretty excited about having it. Uh, you can see it just molted not too long ago. Oh, that stupid little red runner is going to go all the way down to the bottom. Odds are it probably won't crawl up. It'll just keep crawling around. Yeah, it's kind of hard to feed these slings, um, especially since it it jumped out of its web to go down to... I'm sorry, I'm shaking. That's just me. Um... It was in the webbing there and it moved over to the plant when I took the lid off. So, fortunately, we're probably not going to see this one eat, but it will grab that when it does notice that it's there. So, we're going to put this one away and we're going to try uh, see what the Tapanikinius gigas is up to. Okay, so T gigas is down there. So, we're going to try and get these roaches, these little two tiny little roaches down there and see. Of course, they didn't go inside. Let's see when you want them to go down the burrow. They don't go down the burrow. They're going to be running around down here somewhere. There's one right there. Here's the other one down at the bottom of my finger. Um, not sure. Again, this one may be in primo. It doesn't look like it from up here, but it's really hard to tell because it's way down the bottom. So, uh, yeah, we're going to leave it with those two little things in there and see if it'll eat them. Uh, if not, then it'll eat them once it molts. You know, and it's ready to eat. They're not going to go anywhere. Uh, so we're going to try the Edothella Mira next. Okay, so the Edothella Mira didn't want anything to do with eating. Um, so the roach kind of buried itself in the backside. So we're going to hit the Brachypalma Baumgartenii here. See if we can get this one to... Why? Why did the roach have to go in there? I mean, I sit down and I have a discussion with these roaches once I bring them out. And I tell them what their purpose is and what they need to do. And they still don't want to listen to me. I mean, if somebody came to you and said, this is your purpose, don't you think that you would listen to them and try to do what they tell you to do because they kind of know better? No, no, I guess not. Roaches just don't want to listen. And I don't even know if I can even coax it out of there in any way because I don't even know it's probably on the top of the skull inside there oh here it comes dude come on now you're an orange and black brachypelma that just molted. There you go. Jeez. I mean, what did you want me to do for you there? Okay, we're going to move on. Oh, goodness. Got to be ready. This is the Gramostola rosea. I gotta be ready because I a funny feeling this roach might hit this side bunker here and decide to just bolt on me. We definitely don't want that. So I kinda have to pay attention to what it's doing here. Let's see if we can't get this guy to go. There you go. That one listened. It took a little persuading, but at least it listened. So this is the, which would be what they're calling the RCF when they sell it, the Gramostola rosea RCF. So the one that kind of looks more like a Gramostola species mall or a Gramostola species conception, a little bit more redder. Um, this one's a doll, really. I, I mean, I just a sweet little tarantula that's going to want to crawl right out here. No, change your mind. 
You'll know what to do with that thing. Just hang out there and eat it. See how they get? They get to the, the edge of their enclosure. They just don't want to go out. So, okay, let's move on. We got two more to go. And the same deal here. This is the Gramostola, quote unquote, poor Terry. Um, we're going to see if. Oh, right under the log. Are you kidding me, Roach? Yeah, you know it's there, don't you? It's coming out. It's going to come out. No, it's not. I need you to stay in there, too. I don't want you coming out. Yeah, you feel it, don't you? You know it's there. The great South American hunter. So here we have the Gramostola porteri, one of the top predators in Chile. It's sitting upon its log hide that it never uses waiting for the prey item that went in there to come out. So now it's a waiting game. As you can see, the tarantula proceeding forward. Maybe thinking that going in there and getting it's the best option. Do you think that we can coax it out, he says. Don't know. the slight little tap of the front right leg or left leg depending on which way you're looking at it the tarantula doesn't mind playing the waiting game it's got 25 to 30 years of its life to do that and it got bored so now what should we do would you like another? Because I could give you one. So since the Grandma stole a portery, kind of gave up on the spider. Or, yeah, kind of gave up on the prey item. We're going to try... Oh, wait a minute. There's been some movement. Developments are happening. And there it is. The patience pays off. In the end, spider wins, roach loses. Okie dokie. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Everyone, last on our list is the Homo Ioma species blue. We have missed. Where did it go now? It's in your rock. Go to your home. Why won't you just go to your home? The roach is in there. I swear it is. Where else would the roach go? But into the rock. The roach is in there climbing the inside of the rock. This could spell doom for the roach. As you can see, it's appearing at the entrance of the rock. But not enough for the Homo Yoma species blue to feel it. So, what do we need to do now? What we need to do is figure out how to get that little bugger to feel it inside the rock.
That's a small private Alcatraz. The roach has found a way to escape the jaws of the spider. We don't know how it did it. Did it use a raft? Did it just swim? Could it evade that beautiful spider for that long? But we don't have all kinds of time. So we're just going to give him another one. And he can have a second if he wants it. And the second one went into Alcatraz too. <laughs> now we have a problem. We have a gorgeous spider sitting there like that. Holy monkeys, that thing is just... Alright, you guys gotta see it closer. Look at that. Picture time. Now, let's have a chat here, dude. There are two roaches behind you. Inside of that rock. Either one of them would make perfect meal. And as I'm looking at this picture, I see a lake off to the left, just there on the ground. Must have been from the molt, because I count all eight. Dude, I can't give you any more. There's just no way that I can do that. So, we might be able to. I don't even see the two little buggers in there. Oh, you felt them. Yep. See, the light sometimes will get the roach to move. And there we have it. We have found one and half our webbing that we sleep on. Pull your bedding out. And we have a backdoor view. There's a struggle going on in there. I can feel it. Well, folks, anyway, <laughs> this, this guy's gone on long enough, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I hope you guys look forward to the next one. I know we've got some new subscribers that started commenting on some older videos. I will get to everybody's comments here real quickly. Uh, this is my weekend to work, so uh, when we get forced, we'll, we end up working um, our normal five days, the weekend, and our next five days, and we also have the possibility of being forced a second weekend in a row. So you can actually work 19 straight days. Um, hopefully that doesn't happen, but you never know. Um, so yeah, it get, kind of gets tiring, and it's hot and humid. It saps the life out of you. So we're going to end it here. I hope you guys enjoyed it again, and uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. We still, 52% of you people that are watching my videos haven't subscribed. Um, you know, I mean, it, it does help everybody. That, that when you do the subscriptions to people, it just helps bump their numbers up. Um, and I'm still at, believe it or not, 94% of you that watch my videos are male. Where are all my female viewers? So at least all you female viewers can comment down below. Because um, there's only 6% of you of the 1,400 plus people that are subscribed to me that are female. So quick math would be what... Uh, 10% would be 140, so half of that would be 70, so probably around the 75. Probably only 75 of you are women. Can you believe that? I think some of you women need to start recruiting some more women to come and join my club here. So we'll see everybody soon, and uh, happy keeping. <laughs>